morning, good morning, spiritual sanctuary. Glad to have you with us today. This is the day the Lord has made. We came to rejoice and be glad in it. And we are especially glad this morning because we get to rejoice with you. We get to share it with you today. And so whether it's overcast outside, rainy, sunshine, doesn't matter what the weather says, it's always the right temperature at Spirit and Truth. And that temperature is that God is welcome in this place. The Holy Spirit is working in through and as us. Amen, somebody. So this is your moment for worship, as we always tell you, especially during this season. Uh, put, that, put that laundry down. Put those dishes away. Put that cooking away. Tell somebody, this is my worship time. Amen. We came to get into God's presence with you. And so join in with us this morning. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you that all things are working together for our good. We welcome your Holy Spirit into this place during this time. For it's in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ we pray. They all would say amen. Amen. this morning. Living the 
Exactly. Uh, the comedian Kevin Hart has a phrase that he says a lot. He says, everybody wants to be famous, nobody wants to do the work. Um, sometimes I have said in previous teachings of mine, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. So everybody wants to be spiritual, but nobody wants to do what it takes to be spiritual. Uh, you know, there is a, a feeling, sometimes you, there's just a feeling in the air. 
And right now, unfortunately, but it's a big opportunity for those of us who consider ourselves spiritual, there's just this feeling in the air of war, of argument, of fighting. Uh, I don't know what your internet experience is like. I, I know everybody's is a little bit different, but if you've watched YouTube anytime at all recently, is anybody as tired as I am of the John Ossoff ads, the radical John Ossoff? It's like, you know, no matter who you're voting for, who in their right mind believes that that little clip that they keep playing over and over that was obviously taken out of context from a larger statement where he's, they're trying to make it look like he's, he says he's threatening people and wanting to beat them so badly until they can't stand. Well, if anybody truly believes John Ossoff is gonna do that, okay. Um, you know, John, John Ossoff, uh, in, at the risk of stereotyping, John Ossoff strikes me as someone who would have been more on the chess team in high school than the football team in high school. I don't think he's going to do a lot of beating people till they can't stand up, even if he could. Anyway, there is this feeling out there, though, of, of battle, of war, of argument, of friction. And I got a, um, a, a private message the other day on Facebook from a friend of mine. And I'm not trying to, to say anything badly about this person, but they were asking, they were concerned about going to vote and they were asking me and several other people uh, to have some scriptures to be armed with in case they ran into people at the polls. And you know, I just thought, and, and it's so easy to fall into that, you know, I gotta stand up for, I gotta fight for what I believe in. but. It, it, all that kept coming to me was no because and, and their point was some people have weaponized the Bible for their ends you know for their for their agenda so this person was wanting to arm themselves with scriptures on the other side and my answer was just look if they if they weaponize the Bible if you weaponize it too to to fight back with them y'all are still on this level of fighting we who consider ourselves spiritual have got to put our money where our mouth is right now. This is the time. All of these years we have said, let me be spiritual. I want to be spiritual. Okay, it's time for us to do that. And the way that we do that is to show love no matter what's coming at us. Not weaponizing things, even the Bible, back at people when they do it towards us. So... One more line that I thought about the other day that I have used in a teaching before is when somebody is arguing with you, I challenge you, I encourage you, I urge you to say back to them, no matter who they are, I love you more than this argument. I love you more than trying to prove my point right now. I love you more than being right because that is the essence of being spiritual. So we're gonna to read today about the power of love, which is the whole game. The power of love is the whole ball game when it comes to being spiritual. It says, Jesus founded a revolutionary movement in human history, a movement built on the unconditional love of God for the whole world. Love can help and heal when nothing else can. Grant me the power of forgiveness that can turn an enemy into a friend. Help me not to return evil for evil, but to love and bless those who persecute me. Jesus of Nazareth taught us that the way of love is the way to a real relationship with God who created all of us. Love is the way to true relationship with each other as brothers and sisters in God's human family. Spirit of God, Empower us to be ready to answer. Teach and instruct others in the deep mysteries of your love. Strengthen us to overcome hate with love. Equip us to effectively communicate to others that you are bigger than any idea of holding grudges, getting even, or keeping a meticulous record of our sins. Make us aware that you are able to teach, discipline, purify, maintain and parent your creation. Today, I will overcome the world by following the example of Jesus the Christ, the way of love, and so it is. Amen. Expectation. It's
It's already done. But you got to have expectations in order for it to manifest. Amen. Expect your blessings. I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things.
Consider it done, Pastor. Consider it done. Whatever you need, whatever you want, consider it done. Thank you, worship leaders and singers, for your dedication every Sunday you bless us. Thank you, Pastor D.E., for setting a man not to be ashamed, rightly, rightly divine and word of truth. Part of my press, I'm going to read it this morning, but I like to say, um, it's so good to stage the stage again. A while back, I was in my quiet time looking through a folder and noticed a paper dated December 9th, 2015 with the title, The Power of You. It was one of Pastor D.E.'s Wednesday night teaching. I read it and the information awakened my consciousness. It lifted me up. So I thought I'd share a little of that with you today <clears throat> that it may lift your consciousness. I cannot read it all because it's timely, but I'm going to read seven paragraphs because it was such a blessing to me. And I think this year is full of awake. But before I pray, I want to share a brief testimony. And I wrote it down because the focus, and I'm going to read it. During the month of March, because of coronavirus, Pastor D.E. asked each member to give an additional $20 a week to help care on the expenses and vision of the church. For a moment, I thought, hmm, but I began to tear up. Being in, in Mala, Brazil came into my spirit. Surely, they can't miss their pay, surely. And I began to tear up, and at that moment, I decided to give not only $20 a week, but I decided to give an additional $25 a week to help those who may not have extra $20 a week. And I'm sure there are many of you who have done the same thing. But the best part of this, I have had, I want to read it to be exact. Since March, I have been given additional $100 above my tithe and offering. As a result, I have had five times more money left over for March and I. I can't explain it, I just can't. All I can say, I'm not using much gas, I can't say that. Or I'm not going to nails and getting my hair done, groceries, but five times, not $100 left over, not 200, five, five times. And please follow me attentively because I might read fast because the power of you, the power of you in these exact the teaching. Generally in life, when something happens to us, we are quick to attach a label to it. It was either good or bad, right or wrong, nice or nasty. If somebody we love dies, we get laid off from a job or we wreck the car, we lament. Woe is me, how could this happen? Why is God punishing me? If something happen, mean, happen we like, such as promotion at work, a date with some promises, or an increase in income, we say, I'm blessed. Surely, God must be pleased with me. But the truth is, neither one of those is correct. God doesn't bless, curse. God simply is. It gives, G-I-V-E-S. It gives itself and all it has to everyone equally. The good in your life today reflects your consciousness, your willingness to believe in, in and attract it. God hasn't pulled you out of the crowd and said, to you I will give. You pull yourself out of the crowd of mediocre acceptance. You have lifted yourself above the law or averages that dictates an average experience to the unconscious masses. God doesn't down either. 
It doesn't curse some and bless others. It gives, G-I-V-E-S. Its present is holy, and all of its creation sacred. That's the gift of what the Buddhists call right view. Right view is at the beginning and end of the path. It simply means to see and understand things as they really are, not as they appear, LaDonna. It means having the right perspective and view of life and the events and circumstances that make it up. Right view allows you to take in everything, to let all be what it is without taking it personally. Right view let you see things as God sees them from one point of the knowing. One more paragraph. With this right view comes a greater understanding of the power that resides within you and the wisdom of your soul assignment. Now, N-O-W, and we know that our Wednesday night series here is the power of now. Five years ago, the power of you, but now uh, it's the power of our series, but our theme is full of weight. Continue. Now it's time to move ahead in life. You are awake. Our pastor told us that five years ago, ago you're away but the Holy Spirit bringing it back five years later and if you don't get it today somebody gonna be up reading five well, awake he wants us to be awake in everything right view let you see things as God sees them from the spirit of knowing now it's time to move ahead in life you are awake conscious and ready to assume the position nature intended that of conscious code co-created. It's time to start using the power of your mind in a constructive matter. Direct your thoughts towards positive means. Give attention to your best ideas. They lead to dream fulfilled. Finally, it doesn't matter the outside appearance, the outside appearance, the outside but what does matter, the realization, and hold on to know that God is good and God is all. And now we can say, and now we can say Ephesians 3.20, now unto him, not unto him, but I got a revelation, now unto you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that you can ask or think, according to the power working in who? Politics? I don't want to say it. Pastor, come on. Oh. Republican? Democrat? It doesn't matter. According to the power that works in you. And may God await the power of you. God bless. Let this be your prayer today. There's a quiet place Far from the rapid pace Where God can soothe my trouble I Sheltered by tree and flower There in my quiet hour With Him cares are left behind when 
whether a garden small or on a mountain tall, new strength and courage. There I find in from this quiet place. I go prepared to face a new day with love for all mankind. And then from this quiet place I go prepared to face a new day with love for all mankind. Can you say amen today? Amen. That is our uh, quiet place, and we hope that you're connecting with that today during the uh, season of some challenges and uh, certainly anxiety slips in and in on us that we can go to a quiet place where we quiet the mind quiet our fears where we live as pastor gloria said this morning in the now in the now awareness that god is good and all things are working together for our good hopefully you're connecting with that uh, space and place with us this morning welcome to spirit and truth sanctuary uh, today uh, we know that you may not be able to visit with us in person quite yet but if you're joining us for the first time we know that God ordered your steps for you to tune into the broadcast today. And so we know in our minds and our hearts that you are hungering and thirsting for righteousness and probably you're interested in something that's not the same old thing. A lot of times in uh, religion, we just kind of keep hearing the same cliches over and over and over again. But there is a new and green pasture that the shepherd wants to lead us into. And so we know that that's why you're here today. And we hope that someday soon, you'll be able to come out and visit with us in person. And so until then, we bless you. We speak peace to you. We know that all things are working together for your good. Uh, I do want to make a couple of quick announcements uh, this week at uh, 11 a.m. Tuesday morning. You can share with us in our connection service. Uh, Wednesday night, we continue, as Pastor Gloria mentioned, the power of now, powerful both teaching and discussion. And uh, we hope that you not only uh, tune into those services, but invite a friend. Let them know that there is some powerful teaching, a powerful presence that's going on uh, in this time of physical separation. I'm going to ask the camera to walk with me over here. I forgot my birthday list, and so just walk with me. I'll just, I'll interject while he <laughs> gets his things. I uh, just wanted to mention to you all, I don't have all the details yet because I found out late last evening, but as you know, our weekly connection points, our Sunday school classes, our Zoom with Miss Karen, Pastor Cassius weekly, and our Body, Soul, Spirit. Well, we don't have school-age children anymore, so we hadn't really thought all too much about trick-or-treating this year. And I just want to say that I'm sad for all the moms because I'm, uh, trick-or-treating was so much fun so I just wanted to send some love out and we got to talking about it this week what are our parents gonna do and I figure that mothers all over the world will come up with very creative ways to celebrate and do some things so we have an exciting event Miss Stacy wants to do a drive-by trunk or treat which I thought was such a great idea. And so I'm sorry, I'm being a total mom about it. And I almost started crying. She said, would that be okay? And I said, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. So we will make sure that you get the details, but please plan to bring, and no, this is not for college age kids, for the trunk, no, I'm just kidding. I'm sure that they can, <laughs> but, but we would encourage you to plan. I think we're gonna do it on that Friday in the afternoon, uh, maybe three to five if I'm recalling correctly. So we will get you the details a Halloween trick, trunk or treat here at Spirit and Truth Drive-By. So be on the lookout for that information. Hopefully we can still let the kids have fun. Trunk or treat and a drive-by. Wow, 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 wow. I was gonna say, that sounds suspicious to me. Somebody, somebody gonna get a drive-by or snatch you into their trunk. <laughs> We don't live in fear, but uh, it's good to laugh a little bit. Wanted to say a quick happy birthday to a couple of very special people at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. Uh, John Lippett, Kayla Buchanan, Joseph Harrison III, 
Faith Inslee, uh, Lucretia Jackson, Jeff Rust, and Lorraine Michael. We say happy birthday to all the special people at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. Find a way to celebrate yourself this week. We certainly celebrate you. And there are creative ways to celebrate uh, each other. And uh, we, Brandy and I uh, have lived in a bubble to some degree, our kids. Uh, we go basically to the grocery store and to, and to church. Um, we do our, we did a work, workout yesterday at home, just trying to follow a video. Um, uh, we go out to eat when people we, we know are not going to be there. We try to pick odd times to go to restaurants and then sit away from everybody. And I've used so much hand sanitizer, I'm nothing but a big old white ball of ash these days, just ash everywhere. And so we're investing a lot in hand sanitizer and lotion. That's, that's maybe your process. You put the hand sanitizer on, then you put the lotion on. It's just 10, 12 times a day. That's, it's all good. It's all working together for our good. And so um, we say again, happy birthday to everybody. We love you. We wish that we could celebrate you in person. And uh, someday soon we will be able to. We believe that. And so uh, we're going to uh, take a moment and receive our tithe. Um, I'm so uh, excited to be able to give through text. Uh, for years and years, I used I would come in church and fill out a tithe envelope, fill out a check, then fill out a tithe envelope. And if that is your process, we never want to discourage you from that. However, however you do it, we want you to do it that way. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, fear around uh, text to give because it seems to be working for me great. And I put in 84321 and the amount and, and it's done. I, and in, my, in deference to my daughter, who is a young environmentalist, we are saving trees, Esther, by text to give. Look at that. We're saving the planet. And so... Uh, however you give, we encourage you to continue in that, in that um, manner, and we ask you to do it together today in faith, knowing that the, uh, the God who began a good work in you will see it to the day of completion. Come on, let's do it together today. God, we thank you for the chance to give today. We give now knowing that you've given us the power to create wealth, that you may establish covenant with us. God, as we seek first the kingdom of God today, we know that all other things now are being added to us. God, we agree today, not just to giving, not just to the idea of tithes or offerings. God, we agree to the universal laws uh, of this universe. God, that as we give, we receive, as we act, the reaction of blessing is coming back into our lives. God, we thank you today for all good things coming to and through us. For it's in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ we pray. We all would say amen. Amen.
accomplishments. Oh, yes. Even the good work you have begun in me. You also see my finish. Mm. No, not where you are, just say, it's marvelous. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's glorious. It's marvelous. It reminds us of the prophet that says, this is the Lord's doing, <laughs> and it is marvelous in my sight. Yes. The beauty of that is that you are the Lord's doing, and you are marvelous in God's sight. When God looks at you, God says, this is good. This is good because it looks like me, it acts like me, it thinks like me, it creates like me. We're going to talk about that some today, and so we're glad uh, that you're here joining us uh, with us today at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. I did want to say 
uh, a quick thank you uh, during this season. It, when you get into a challenging season and people really rally uh, to work together cohesively, I think it uh, is befitting that you constantly uh, give, give exposure to good deeds. And uh, I wanted to say another thank you to the Corona crew who has kept us together during all this season, our musicians, all the singers. My, my daughter occasionally gets a week off from, the, uh, from working the projector and Larry comes in and fills in. I, I do love it when Larry runs the projector uh, because he is, he's very meticulous the way he does the projector, but he also worships while he's doing it. And he'll have one hand in the air and the other on the mouse trying to make sure he's not. That's, 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 the tr that's a truly sincere moment. I am a person who, um, who likes to do a good job. At the same time, in my, in my busyness, I recognize the love of God in my life. What a beautiful moment that is. Um, I wanted to say thank you to our, uh, to our staff uh, who have been so wonderful during uh, this season. Uh, this week, Benny and Marla are out of town for a few days, and so it gives me a chance to brag on them when they're not here. Um, but Marla recently had a, a knee replacement and has come back. Uh, to work and we see her working through that rehab and trying to get that knee strong again. Uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, we also wanted to say uh, to Benny Grizel who really uh, heads a lot of projects that we have to do here. Um, last week in the midst of us trying to figure out our modem, trying to figure out how to get the, the Wi-Fi working again so we can broadcast, we are intrinsically dependent right now on, uh, on the internet, on our ability to, to connect with people um, virtually. And so Benny, I think he stayed up here for three or four days in a row. He may have even slept here, trying to deal with um, our cable company and all those things. And so we want to say thank you. As soon as that project ended, he had to oversee the project of getting our breezeway, um, get, getting the, the roofing and the structure fixed. And so wherever you are, wherever you and Marla are, Benny, today, enjoy yourself. As soon as you stop watching, go and do something fun. Go do something safe, but enjoy yourself some way. We're thankful for all of our staff. If I went down through, just down through all of the people who make this work, both Benny, Marla, Esther, folks, who is an amazing blessing uh, to this ministry. Um, she's, I see people waving her, she's here today. Uh, LaDonna, who's just been amazing during, uh, during this season. Randy Renfro, who holds all of us together. Diane Patterson, who every, every year on our anniversary, we get to say, how many years have you been a member of Spirit and Truth Sanctuary? And this was not one of those years, although Diane is one of the, our longest living members, and she's still young at heart, but I think she's been here for over 50 years, over 50 of the 60 years she's been here. And uh, in this season of her life, volunteers her time faithfully to this ministry, and we're so grateful for her. I came in last week one day really early. Uh, it was probably five o'clock in the morning and I was doing a little bit of exercise. And so I walked through the building and turned the alarm off. And um, Sergeant Major comes here very, he's here usually before anybody's here in the mornings. And he was here as usual about 6 a.m. that morning. And I walked up, up into the hallway from down, from down in the basement and didn't realize I would startle him. And when I walked into that basement, he, he reached for that, that piece and I said, hold on, G, hold on, Lord. <laughs> it's just me, Sergeant Major. He said, well, I was, I was just checking. I said, I want you to check. Just keep it in check, amen. <laughs> but he keeps all of us safe. He keeps our building secure. He looks out for us. There's so many people. Uh, Brandy, my sister, my parents have just been uh, just amazing during this season. And uh, we, we thank you for your faithfulness. We, we're getting through this together. We're, doing the, we're making a way where there is no way. And um, keeping our head above water. Come on. Making a way when you can. Temporary layoff. Good times. <laughs> Easy credit rip off. <laughs> Good times. Ain't we lucky we got them. Da -da 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 -da. Good times. Yeah. If you don't watch Good Times, you don't know what's going on with Good Times. Yes, it's, it is a good time, but it's a challenging time. We're, we're working through it together. And so we thank all of the, the faithful hearts that have helped us get through this season. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, welcome to Spirit and Truth Sanctuary, where the whole household of God is both welcomed and wanted. 
And we want you to know that you're here at the right time, in the right space, in the right place uh, to hear what I believe God has for us today. We hope today that, honestly, we hope that we don't teach you anything. We're not here to teach you anything. We trust that you already know everything that God has placed inside of you. Our job isn't to teach, it's to remove the obstacles that keep you from seeing what you already know. And so we understand at Spirit of Truth that religion tells you what to think. Doctrines, dogmas, all kinds of do's and don'ts. The spirituality is a little bit higher. We trust the Spirit of God in you. And so we don't tell you what to do. We don't tell you what not to do. Watch this, we just wanna engage your mind in how to think, not tell you what to think. Let's just think together today. Let's open up that portal, knowing that as those minds and as that Spirit is open, that the truth is already resident. And so it really won't be a revelation as much as it will be an uncovering of something and a discovering or recovering of something that you already have. Uh, and so uh, we know that we're gonna offer you a lot of food today. Don't feel like you have to eat all of it. We had some guests a couple of weeks ago who slipped in among us and I uh, think maybe we get used to the things that we teach and talk about that we just take for granted. These are truths that we just walk into freely every week. When you haven't been here and you hear it, you go, wow, what, what is this that I'm hearing for the first time? And so if that's your experience today, that's okay. Eat what you can. Don't feel like you have to eat all of it. We know that today we will plant a seed with you. It may not come into harvest immediately. It may take 10, 15, 20 years. But when that water hits that seed, you'll remember that someone planted a seed in your heart years and years ago. So change it at your own pace and in your own space uh, today. That is our prayer. All right. Well, I encourage everybody, whether you're watching with us today, take a big, deep breath, close those eyes, and let that breath go. In this moment, as we give and take a breath, we are welcoming the beginner's mind, knowing that faith comes by hearing and not by having heard, knowing that God has spoken but is going to speak into and through us today. As Jesus instructed us, we become today as little children, curious, inquisitive, entering into the kingdom with our minds open. Our cups are empty today. Our minds are, are ready to hear today. We say, let there be light, let there be love, let there be enlightenment and awakening. For it's in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ we pray. They always say amen. 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 This is our liturgy. If we have any liturgy at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary, this is our invitation of truth. We just call it the prayer of surrender. Hopefully we have it there for you. We'd ask you to read it out loud with us. This is just our way of saying, God, wherever you want to take us today, we're ready to go. Take us into green pastures. Let's eat together. Come on, let's read together. Spirit of truth, carry me where you will. Bring to me what you will. Take from me what you will. Awaken in me what you will. The Christ man is around me, the Christ mind is in me, the Christ power flows through me, and the Christ mystery exists as me. I believe it, I perceive it, and now I receive it. I am surrendered, amen, and so it is. Our subject uh, this morning is simply remembering the Creator. Remembering the Creator, and we're gonna get into some different levels of what all that means, and uh, hopefully, the little first part of this may be a review for some of you who have been connecting to Spirit and Truth Sanctuary for, for a season. And then we're going to take you a couple steps further. Um, that's kind of how Revelation works most of the time with us is line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little bit, there a little bit. Occasionally, we take a quantum leap in Revelation, but for the most part, we are built, we are kind of building a foundation together, then continuing to build that structure and add a little bit of piece, little piece at a time. And so we want to add a couple pieces to that today. And uh, in this process that we understand uh, of, of, the, of the divine creative process, we're going to add a little bit onto that today under the subject of remembering the Creator. When we talk about uh, the divine creative process, uh, we don't have to look very far. Uh, there are th the first three verses in the Bible, we begin to see this, this divinely creative process beginning to unfold. I want to read it to you this morning. Genesis uh, chapter 1 and beginning in verse 1 through verse 4. Follow with me if you will. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and, divi and God divided the light from the darkness. I want to review with you real quickly the divine creative process that we are uncovering and discovering at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. It's all in verses 3 and in verses 4, other than the fact that even in our chaos, the Spirit of God is always hovering, 
always there to make a difference, make a change, make a transformation, to help us to morph into something that we want to enjoy of ourselves even more. But when we get to verse 3, it is specifically laid out for us. God said, let there be light. Then God saw that there was light. Then God said it was good. This is how we say it at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. In the present moment, we say, say it, see it, and then survey it. Okay? Say it, let there be. God saw it, saw or see it, God saw the light, and then watch this, God surveyed it, it is good. So, God said, God saw, and then God surveyed. Stay with me because we're going to build some levels on this this morning. Genesis, still in chapter 1, verse 9 now. Then God said, we find this pattern nine times in the first chapter of Genesis. Nine times we find this divine creative pattern. Uh, verse 9, then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered into one place, let the dry land appear, and it was so. Then God called the land earth, the gathering together of the waters, he called the seas. Here it is. And God saw that it was good. Again, verses 9 and 10, God said it, then God saw it, then God surveyed it. Here's where we come into the process, okay? I won't read all nine times that Genesis 1 talks about the divine creative process. Here's where we get involved. Genesis 1 and verse 26. Watch, watch how we get involved here. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, cattle, over all the other living, creeping things. So watch this. So God says this. I've created things. I've created the water. We've created the dry land. We've created the herbs of the field, the beasts now of the field. We've, I've created a lot of things. Watch this. But now God says, as the creator, I'm going to now create creators. Everybody feel that? I spent the first part of Genesis saying, I'm going to create some things. I'm going to create some animals. I'm going to create some water, some, some trees, some fruit, some vegetation. I'm going to put some specific boundaries on these things. But now, in the, at the end of chapter 1 of Genesis, God says, all right, I've created a lot of things. Now, as a creator, I'm going to create creators. Whoo, spirit and truth. This is where we come in right here. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. Then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I'm going to give a little shout out to Pastor Lonnie right here. Everything God has done, it is already done. He did it in six days, according to the metaphor that we get in, in Genesis. On the seventh day, God rested, and that's it. The seventh day becomes a holy day. God is not creating anything else. So when we feel like we create something, really... We are uncovering through the creative process something that God has already given to us. Okay, so when we say things like, it is finished, it is finished. God has finished it. The work is done. Our job is not to maybe even create it as much as it is to wake up to what has been created as, as creator. So uh, God saw that everything he made was good. Indeed, it was very good. Uh, the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, the next verse is chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Okay, it's all done. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all of his work that he had done. That it keeps, the Genesis writer keeps reiterating. I want you guys to get this. I, God worked for seven days. He's resting and he's continuing to rest on the work that he'd done. Verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it, he rested from all the work which God had created and made. The, the pattern that we get here is that God worked for six days. On the seventh day, it was to be a day of rest, a day set apart. Even the word sanctified here. I'm resting on the seventh day. Now he's going to involve us in the process. Genesis chapter 2. Now look at verse 18. Genesis 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good. That's the first time we get that phrase there, not good, in the, in, the, in the whole Scripture. It is not good, okay? And so sometimes in the process of saying and seeing and surveying, you have to find some honesty to say, this is not something that's serving me right now. 
if God can do it, we can do it, okay? God, cre God said, let there be light. He saw the light. He surveyed. The light is good. God said, let there, be, let there be other creators. He saw us and said that we were good. However, there was an element to us that we needed of compatibility. We needed companionship. We needed socialization. That's a whole lot to say during the, uh, during the season of social distancing. God said, it's not good. It's not good. We're social creatures. We're supposed to be with other people, okay? And so God in the creative process is willing to survey his own creation and say, this isn't so good right here. It does not involve guilt. It doesn't involve remorse. It doesn't involve a repentance of any sort. It does not involve an altar call. It just involves honesty. If I can see something in my life that I've created and I survey that it's not good, do I have the courage to say, this is not serving me. God, help me create something else. Now, the things that keep us from surveying honestly are really things given to us in church. Things like the devil, things like spiritual warfare, things like God's trust in me with a test, all of these ways we explain around it. The only way to explain it is that you are a little God. You've said it, you've seen it, now you're surveying it, but you want to act like it's not yours. <laughs> And so now we bring in devilology and spiritual warfare and all kinds of times and seasons and favors and God says no, but it's no is not always, but there's a yes over here. All these things are just ways of explaining we don't understand our divine capacity. We can see it, we can say it, we can survey it, and if we don't like it, we don't have to pray for our season. We don't have to, to beg God for favor to fall on us. We don't have to wait until the heavens open up. All we have to do is be honest start back over at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Come on, Brian McKnight. Help me, somebody. Mm-hmm. Start back at one. <laughs> Say it again. Say it differently. See it now. Now survey it and see if this is what you want. That is the God in you and as you working at all times. Okay? So, how do we get to this space? God said it's not good that man should be alone. I will create a comparable, uh, someone comparable to him. Notice, God was willing in the process to see it, survey it, and then D is uh, shifted. I've been going real fast through this whole process this morning. Sorry, Larry, for that. A, say it. B, see it. D, uh, C, survey it. D, if you don't like it, shift it. You're not the first person to shift. <laughs> You're not the first person to deal with some shift. You're not the first person who's had the shift hit the fan. Talk to me, somebody. You're not the first person to talk some shift. I've talked some shift in my life before, okay? Sometimes you got to back that shift up. Amen, somebody. All right, everybody's here now. Amen. What does that mean? If God had to shift, we're going to have to shift, okay? That's why the good work he began in you will see it to the day of completion. That means it may not all be finished at once. Jesus healed a blind man and said, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. Jesus said, let's shift that thing. I started a good work in you. Let's complete it now. He prayed a second time in the shift and the blind man could see. In the process of recovery, of, of creation, sometimes we have to be willing to survey it and then shift it. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 19. Genesis 2 and 19. This is where we're going to start building a little bit on what we've already got. Here's, here comes the new stuff here. Verse 19, chapter 2 of Genesis. Out of the ground... The Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air. Then God brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Whew, all right, so let's, let's paint this picture again. God is bringing creation now to Adam. Creation are the things. Adam is the creator created like the creator. Mm -hmm. So God says, I'm going to bring the creation to a creator and see what you create with them. <laughs> Everybody feel it now? I'm going to bring them to you, Adam, and in the process of bringing them to you, I'm going, watch these two words, I'm going to see. I want to see how you operate, Adam. And so we say it. We see it, we survey it, we shift it, and in the process, E, God is supervising it. So as we say it, see it, survey it, shift it, God is going to see in his supervision of what we're doing. Can I say it this way? You're creating some things, but God's watching while you create it. <laughs> 
He, is, he wants to see. In other words, watch this. I want to see how you play God. I want to see how you handle my power. Anybody seen the movie Bruce Almighty? God gives uh, Jim Carrey, Morgan Freeman gives Jim Carrey these godly abilities, and then he stands and watches. I want to see how you play God. Let's see how you deal with your divine creativity. God, I'm going to give you my image and likeness, then I'm going to allow you to say it, see it, survey it. If it's not beneficial, to shift it. But while you operate in this power, I am going to supervise it. Now let's get a little bit more out of, of verse 19. So he's going to bring, the, bring them to Adam to see what Adam would call them. Look at the end of that verse. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So let's go through it again. Now you're going to say it. You're going to see it. You're going to survey it. You're going to shift it. In the process, God is going to supervise it. And when you call it its name, God's going to second it. Mm. This is the new place, okay? What does that mean? <laughs> when I act like God and speak things over creation, God is going to honor the God in me. The creator who created a creator is going to honor my creative process, and if I call it this, God's going to call it that. Mm, can I help you right here? If I call it sickness, God's going to call it sickness. If I call it disease, God's going to call it, if I call it evil, God's going to call it evil. If I call it bad, God's going to call it bad. Ooh, can I say it this way? If I call it naked, God's going to call it naked. Mm -hmm. If I call it shame, God's going to call it shame. If I call it good, God's going to call it good. If I call it recovery, God's going to call it. Why? Because God is going to respect the God in me because God created a lot of things, but then God said, let me create some gods. Let the creator create some creators. I want to see how they operate in this creation. I'm going to see it. I'm going to supervise it. And then I'm going to second it, whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. Woo. God agrees with what we say, what we call it. God honors the God in us. God respects the divinity in us and honors our divine creative process. Woo. When we say it, God seconds it. Mm-hmm. I want to see, I want to supervise as they say it, see it, survey it, shift it. Then I'm going to supervise it and then second what they're saying. Whew. Are you realizing now that the power of life and death <laughs> is in your tongue? <laughs> The power of life and death is in the mind that controls the tongue. Not only is it the power of life and death, it's the power that God gave us for us to create it. I want to give you two things today to ponder this week as you think about uh, your own divine creative process as we, be, as we become more aware of the words uh, that we're speaking. Two things. Number one, this is a review, then we'll get to something else. Number one, we are made in the image and likeness of God. That is something that I think probably I could spend most of the rest of my life in ministry teaching. Accept it, believe it, receive it, perceive it. You are not some, some accident of nature. You are made in the image and likeness of God. You carry God's DNA within you. When you get that revelation that you are made like God, then you start waking up to things like, how would God send himself to hell? Hmm. How could God eternally torture himself? How could God banish himself? How could God excommunicate himself? When God looks at me, God sees a piece of God. Whoo, beholding in the mirror the glory of God. When you get that revelation, all other revelations come into line through that. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together all things in one, in Christ. Whoo, both things in heaven and things under the earth, all things gathered into him. What does that mean? It all came from God. It's all going back to God. When you really get the revelation that God created everything in his own likeness, especially us, that God will not lose anything of himself. I'm not just gathering the kingdoms and the, the, the systems of the world. Watch this. I'm gathering myself back to myself. Woo. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Then let's see how they handle this creative power. I want to give you some scriptural context this morning. Where does this 
idea come from? It's not just Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. We have a plethora of Scripture throughout the Old Testament and even coming into the New Testament where we see this divine presence happening in, through, and as what we call human beings. Psalm 82 and verse 6, this is David speaking. He said, I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So now listen to that. If you, if you look at that translation, pick about 10 different translations, read them all. They all say gods, okay? I said, you are gods. Now notice it's a little g. That means we are creators created by the creator, but we're still in that image. We still have God-likeness, divinity working through us. Jesus reiterates this uh, in his ministry and almost is killed for it. Jesus dares to say what David said. Watch this, John chapter 10, and beginning in verse 34. Jesus says this, John 10, 34. Jesus answered them and said, Is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. So now we know Jesus is quoting Psalm 82. So in John 10, it's a reference back to Psalm 82. Now, here is the beauty of this. Jesus says, all right, so you're going to kill me for saying this, but really, I didn't say it first. <laughs> David, who you guys say you're in the lineage of David, is the one who started this. I'm just, I just chose to read what you guys said you know. Why is this a shock to you? And, and here's the question, I guess, for Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. Where did this theology go? Where did it get hidden? If we're created in the first chapter of Genesis in the image and likeness of God, David has the boldness to say it in Psalm 82 that we are gods. Where did this theology get hidden? Where did it go? Let me tell you where it went. When shame and blame and sin and separation consciousness and fallenness and Adam's cursed race and all of these things began to take place in our consciousness, now we started believing, watch this, because we weren't navigating our God-likeness the right way, because we couldn't survey ourselves the right way, now all of a sudden we're not divine anymore. We are humans, we are lowly, we are wretches, we are saved by grace, we are being dangled over the hallows of hell. All this stuff slips in, watch this, because we can't survey who we are. Yes, I created something that's not serving me. It doesn't mean that I'm not a creator. It doesn't mean that I'm not made in the image and likeness of God and of good. I have accepted this idea that I'm not like God. And then when somebody reminds me who I am, I believe that they're worthy of being killed because they dare to remind me who I am. Wow. How far have we gotten away from what the Bible meant for us to know from the beginning? You are God's. Jesus said to this, is, is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. Now watch further, verse 35. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken, and do you, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God. You ever dealt with that at family reunion? <laughs> I am God, I am like God, I'm made like God, I am divinity. You better not do that, you're going to get in trouble. You better not say things like that. You better say things like that. This is the season to wake up to who you are. It's not new revelation, it's something we've forgotten. We've forgotten who we are. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is working in us. I heard somebody say this morning, Christ in us is the hope of glory and as us. Paul, beholding in a mirror the glory of God. As he is in this world, so are we. Let me go further. When we see him, we're going to be like him. Now, I've heard people preach my entire life. That means when we see him in the rapture, when we see him in the second coming. But I know now in my consciousness, when we see him in Christ's consciousness, mm -hmm, Paul said this, this way, though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. What does that mean? How do we know Christ not according to the flesh? In other words, when you wake up not to the Jesus person, but to the Christ spirit, we will be able to recognize that the same spirit that was working in Christ is now working in us. We like to say it this way, uh, it's spirit and truth sanctuary, I'm gonna have Larry help me with this. We say it this way, I am created by God, I'm creative like God, and I'm creating as a God. 
And that last G, we make it little so that everybody can have time to warm up to it. Amen, somebody. I'm created by God. I'm creative like God, made in the image and likeness of God and good. And now as God supervises it and seconds it, I am creating as a God. God even honors the God working in me. I'm created by God, creative like God, and creating as a God. When you get this, when you really get your mind around this, you don't have to rebuke the devil. You don't have to resist the devil. You don't have to cast the devil out of somebody. Literally, you will grow up so fast that the devil just leaves. I was telling um, one of my children last night that when I got married, a lot of my friends were not married yet. And I was used to playing basketball late at night. They'd call me at 10 o'clock and I'd, hey man, we're gonna go play some, you wanna meet us up here? Yeah, I'll, go, I'll come. And I'd play basketball at midnight, 12.30 at night. When I got married, things changed. There was no playing basketball at one, two o'clock in the morning. You're, you're a married man, you become a father. All these, you, you start to live a different way. Watch this. I didn't have to tell my single friends I can't hang anymore. It was an understanding, you're at a different place now. And we want to do our thing late at night. You maybe not could, can do that as much as you used to. It was a natural separation from some things, just naturally. Watch this. You don't have to tell the devil, look, I know we've been going together a long time. I, you, I've been blaming you for, <laughs> for everything in my life for, ye for years and years. We, devil, we've been blaming you generationally for everything in our family. But during this season, we just need a little break. Let's take a little, let's take some time off and let's date other people, see how it works for us. You don't have to have a speech. You don't have to tell the devil, hey, it's me, it's not you. There's nothing wrong with you, it's just me. It's just me. You've done, you don't have to have a, a, you don't have to take the high road with the devil. All you have to do is wake up to this. Everything that I see in my life comes from divine creativity. It's all been created. The devil is not involved in it. At any point, I can say it, see it, survey it, shift it, and then know that God is supervising it and seconding it. When you get that in your mind, the devil will flee from you. Devilology, devil blame, devil shame, devil sin, all of that lower consciousness will just find its way somewhere else. Usually on to your cousin and them. Amen, somebody. <laughs> All right, uh, let's, let's, let's move on. Once we wake up to this divinity uh, that God has placed within us, number two, and this is what I want to leave with you today, we remember, remember where the divinity comes from. Now, this may be something that comforts uh, quite a bit of our members today and those who are watching. I am divine. I am, I am like God. I am a creator that's created by a creator. Okay, what, is that, what does that mean for today's context? Number two, remember where all this creativity comes from. Okay, that's what the Sabbath is all about. Where does this creativity come from? Is This is the day, watch this, that we remember our Creator. The Creator created the world in six days. On the seventh day, God rested from the creative process. Then trusts us with the creative process, but says, now that you are a creator like me, I want you to rest on the seventh day from the creative process. Mm. The seventh day is not about necessarily about something that's more holy, or is it Friday, is it Saturday, is it Sunday? Our Muslim and Jewish brothers worship on Friday, coming into Saturday. Christians worship on Sunday, unless you're a Seventh-day Adventist and you worship on Saturday. We all argue over what the holy day is. It is not even about a day. It is about a remembrance in your mind. When I use my creative power, when I create something in my life, I need to stand back from that thing and say, yes, I created it, but the creative power came from a creator. And so in that essence, that's where the glory is revealed. God, let my creative power reflect your glory. Let the things that I create, let everything be done. God, that gives glory and honor to your name. I want to do right by my creative power. And on at least one day a week, I'm going to rest from all this creativity and look up. <laughs> I'm going to look to the hills from which cometh my strength. I'm going to remember on this day, God, that you gave me this power. Thank you for trusting me to be like you. <laughs> Thank you for trusting me with your name and your nature. God, when I lift my hands in the sanctuary, I'm remembering where my power comes from. 
I'm remembering that you chose to make me like you. Mm. Remember where your creativity comes from. Whew, in other words, remember all of your amazing creativity came from an amazing creator. Whew, God is good. That's why it's in you. <laughs> God is love. That's why you can experience love. God is joy. That's why you can create joy. God is creative. That's why you can create what you create. Remember your creator, De Deuteronomy 8 and verse 12. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 12, this is in the context of the children of Israel leaving Egypt and now experiencing some level of independence from God. And God's trying to remind them, hey, this is good. I'm glad you guys are doing well. But let's remember where all this creativity comes from. Watch this. Verse 12, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, your silver and gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up, watch this, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. What is God saying? Okay, maybe you're not in a season to the Israelites of, of as much drama and conflict as, you, as you're used to being in. But now that you're gaining some independence, don't forget who brought you out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> don't forget who parted the waters of the Jordan. Don't forget where the manna fell from the sky, where that came from. Don't forget where the, where the water came out of the rock. Don't forget I gave you a fire by night, a cloud by day. Don't forget I made a way out of no way. Don't forget your creator. Say it. See it. Survey it. Shift it and then know that I'm going to supervise it, I'm going to second it, but in all of this process, remember where it came from. Keep coming, Deuteronomy 8, and looking out at verse 17. Deuteronomy 8 and 17. Then you say in your heart, this is what the proud say, my power and, my, and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Verse 18, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he, she, it, that gives you the power to get wealth, that God may establish covenant with you as he swore to your fathers, even as it is to this day. When you uh, have used your creative power, your creativity to create a life of wealth, prosperity, happiness, joy, watch this, remember where that creativity came from. Who remember it. The question is this, how... Do we show our remembrance? How do we show God that we are remembering? Well, there's, my goodness, there's probably hundreds and thousands of ways that we could show it. Today, we're going to focus on one way. What, is that, what does that mean? How do we remember uh, that God has trusted us with this creative power and that we are creators created by the Creator? On the seventh day, <laughs> rest from your creativity in remembrance that your creativity comes from an awesome Creator. I want to encourage you today that when we say rest from your creativity, that doesn't mean you can't cook for your family. <laughs> it doesn't mean you can't do a load of laundry. I'm, I'm in a um, study right now of some very lit literalistic interpretations of religion and some of the orthodox ways of doing these things, especially regarding the Sabbath, is bizarre. Um, there, there are ideas surrounding the Sabbath that you cannot even flip on a light switch because that's a process of creativity. You cannot light a match. You can eat the food, but you can't light a match because the light of the match is a creative process of work. So the food has to be cooked before the Sabbath so that, and then you gotta figure out a way to keep it warm <laughs> without lighting a match. You can't flip, flip on a switch to light the gas in your oven. On the, on the, now this is the literal mind, the literal religious mind. Here's the amazing thing. I asked the question in this research this week, you are not able to move anything outside of your house. So you can't take a chair outside of your house, you can't take, you're really not supposed to take keys. People, literalists, even walk everywhere they're going on the Sabbath because they don't want to use a key, they don't want to start a car engine. That's a creative process. They're supposed to rest from all creativity on the Sabbath. And they said, but you can, watch this, you can rearrange the furniture inside of your house. I said, hold on now. You can't flip a switch, but you can pick up a heavy couch and put it somewhere. And they said, yes, because it's not necessarily considered creativity. I said, look here, my mama's an interior designer. 
If you told her that rearranging inside your house was not work, you might get slapped, okay? It's all dependent on perspective. And, how, and so they, they do this process of you can move furniture, but you have to do it under a tent outside so that it's not public, it's considered a private domain. All these different regulations and rules and, you know, watch this. God gave Moses 10 commandments. Moses turned the 10 into 616 holy Levitical laws. Jesus took all that mess and said, let me help you all with this. We're going to make this real clear for you. Just love God, love yourself, and love your neighbor. That's all you got to do. We're going to take the 10, the 600. Let's just make this thing simple. What do we mean about honoring the Sabbath? There is no specific way to honor the Sabbath. What does that mean? At some point in your day, <laughs> at some point in your week, at some point in, your, in the season of your life, when you see that creative process working through you and you begin to be proud of yourself, you begin to stand back from something you creative, created. Look up and say, God, in this moment, <laughs> I am not ignorant to the fact that I didn't create this by myself. You have trusted me with this creative power. You made a lot of things. But then you created creators, and I'm one of those creators. And I want to tell you, thank you. Thank you, God, <laughs> for trusting me with the power to create. God, I won't forget whether I create something that I, I, I survey as bad or I survey as being good. I will remember in this process to look up and say thank you. Thank you for trusting me to carry this power within me. Can you say amen today? Amen. Well, I want to give you an affirmation, and maybe this is something that uh, you can carry with you this week uh, that would be a blessing to you. It just goes like this. Today I acknowledge that I'm created by God, creative like God, and creating as a God. I will say it, see it, survey it, shift it, and be aware that God supervises it and seconds it. This week I will honor my Creator by remembering where my creativity comes from. As I honor the Sabbath and the way that you honor it, I'm honoring the creator and the creative process. Amen. I'll ask you if you will, whether you're joining us uh, from home, whether you're on a laptop or a television or even a smartphone, let's all say this out loud together today as our, as our affirmation. Today, I acknowledge that I'm created by God, creative like God, and creating as a God. I will say it, see it, survey it, shift it, and be aware that God supervises it and seconds it. This week, I will honor my Creator by remembering where my creativity comes from. As I honor the Sabbath, I am honoring the Creator and the creative process. Amen. Amen. And so it is. We hope that that was something that you can chew on this week, a blessing to you. We know this, uh, that uh, sometimes religious experiences they leave us uh, emotionally spent. Um, I've had so many connection points uh, with God's presence, with worship, and I've left those moments thinking, that was so amazing. Now, what did I learn? What, did I, what am I going to do with this? And there's many things that we learn, and I'm certainly not um, beleaguering all of it. What I, what I do want to encourage you is that when the power is outside of you, it's never in you, okay? When you're waiting on God, rebuking the devil, all the power that you're trying to get is somewhere out there. So if you're joining us today, let me encourage you, the best way for you to become powerful is not to give away the power that you already have. Amen. Don't give that power away to a season that's on that way, to a future fulfillment of prophecy, to a moment of favor, to the, it, once the de when the devil ceases from his troubling, when the weary, when the wicked cease from their bothering me, I'm have another jewel one day. All of those are subtle ways of giving our power away. I heard Pastor Gloria say it this, today this way, I don't care what the election is or is not. I don't care if it's a Democrat or Republican. That has nothing to do with the power inside of you. We are not dependent on government or on something outside of us. Our power is right here. Whew, God trusted us as creators to create the life that we want to experience. We're doing that right now. And so we, we encourage you this week, hold on to your power. And know that uh, the same God who began a good work in you will see it to the day of completion. Amen to that. We encourage you to give today uh, as we continue uh, to, to try to maintain everything that God has entrusted with us. We don't really know uh, exactly what the coronavirus is going to do this winter season. But we know this, that we've put our hands to the plow and we will not turn back. We believe that the message, the mandate, the mission of Spirit and True Sanctuary is called to be a model 
we do say this, um, maybe proudly, but hopefully also humbly, that there aren't a lot of expressions like us. There aren't a lot of churches that occasionally catch the Holy Ghost and still remind you that you are God, that are open to all people from every aspect of life, all different genders and sexual orientation, all religions, all streams of faith are welcome and wanted in this house. That doesn't happen a lot, especially not in the southeastern United States. Um, and so we believe that this model is something that's worth keeping alive. And we hope that you will continue to help us in that journey. Pastor Gloria said this morning she uh, had, had covenanted to give an extra $20 during uh, the coronavirus. And miraculously, as a testimony, seemingly she has more than she, than she began with. I pray that that's all of our testimony this season. My family is covenanted to do this. We are in this with you. We want to make sure that Spirit and Truth Sanctuary remains strong as a mothership uh, of inclusion, of expanded consciousness, and that when this virus is over, that we can say God has helped us to get through this season together. God, we thank you today for the chance to give. We hold it up now, God, to say thank you for beginning a good work in us. God, we know that you've given us the power to get wealth. God, now that we have built houses, now that our stomachs are full, we will remember that it is you who gave us power to get wealth. We remember today our Creator. For it's in the name and nature of Christ we pray. Amen.
Hey, man, we want to say as you go in peace today, this is going to be a great week. As we say it, as we see it, as we survey it, as we shift it, yes. know that God is supervising it and seconding it. Yes. And on the seventh day, on the Sabbath, we're going to look up and say, God, we remember where all this power comes from. Can you say amen to that? God, we go in peace now knowing the good work you began in us. You'll see it to the day of completion. We speak today. This to be a great week in our lives, a great yes. week of awakening, a great week of awareness, of power, of divine creativity, for it's in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ, we pray. They all would say amen. amen. Go in peace. May God bless you. Thank you. Just as sure, my, my baby, as there are stars above, I want to say, want to say, want to say, someday we'll be together. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Someday, some sweet day, we'll be together. I know, I know, my love is yours, baby. Just as sure, my, my baby, yeah. that there are stars above. Wanna say, wanna say, wanna say, someday we'll be together. Yes, we will, yes, we will. Someday, tell everybody we'll now. Yeah.